there was once a piece of wood it went to a sculptor and said can you make me into a beautiful murti a beautiful deity the sculptor said i am ready are you ready the wood said yes i am ready sculptor said all right he took out his tools and started chiseling the wood screamed what are you doing it's so painful please stop the sculptor said listen if you wish to become beautiful you will have to tolerate pain so all right all right i am ready but don't do so much ration it only a little bit every day now he went on with his work and the wood kept on complaining enough for today now i want to sleep you do it tomorrow it kept on complaining the sculptor kept on doing his work and finally that wood was transformed into a beautiful deity and it got installed in the temple of god so we are also like that uncut wood if we wish to beautify ourselves from inside we have to let god the sculptor do his work Bhagavad Gita shloka chanting is followed by translation and commentary by Swami Mukundananda. Yogasthah kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjaya siddhya siddhyo samo bhutva samatvam yoga muchyate Be steadfast in the performance of your duty, O Arjun, abandoning attachment to success and failure. Such equanimity is called yog. The Sri Krishna says, "Yogast." unite your consciousness with god be indifferent to the dualities of success and failure understand that this is a part of life it will keep coming who is that person in this world who has only got success all life long who is that person who has only got failure all life long god makes a wonderful mix for all of us and nobody can hope to succeed always even if you've put in your best efforts because there are two people who are putting three people four people let's say there are 10 businesses in the industry they are all putting their best efforts there will always be some successes there will be some failures there was once a father he got his two daughters married one was married to a farmer another was married to a brick maker he had a brick making industry so the father went first to the second daughter's house just to see how is my daughter she said father it's very bad times it just keeps raining and raining so the brick kiln you know it is made it's outside if it rains you can't make bricks please pray to god that it doesn't rain so much father started thinking from there he went to the second daughter's house to stay for a few days who was a farmer so she said father i am having great days you know god gives so much of rain and we have great crop please pray to god to ensure that it every year it rains like this 
Now father said that she wants the rain not to come. She wants the rain to come. What should I pray? Oh Lord, please do whatever you wish. So, in life there will always be winners and losers. In our own life, each person will experience winning and losing. That's the dualities of life. When Lord Ram, he was to be crowned as the king of Ayodhya the next day. And overnight there was a transformation. Kai Kai engineered it in such a way that King Dashrath asked him to go to the forest for 14 years. So that Lord Ram who was to be the king, all of a sudden life took a turn. He removed his kingly ornaments and he went off wearing the forest dress along with Lakshman and Sita into the forest. Now they were sleeping there in the forest on the third, fourth day when Guha Raj, Nishad Raj Guha, the tribal king, he was sitting there and he was blaming Kai Kai for Ram's misfortune. Lakshman said it's not Kai Kai's fault. Kasyai kaantam sukham upagatam dukham ekaanta tova nichair gachat yuparichatasha chakrame nikramena. This is life. Just like the needle of the clock, it comes up, then it goes down, then it comes up, then it goes down. That's life. You have to be prepared for all kinds of things. If somebody is attached to success, then that person will be highly disconcerted when that person fails. So, success and failure will come in your life. How are you going to take it? Like the waves of the ocean, they will keep on flowing. The Sri Krishna says, Arjun, become detached to both these imposters, success and failure. There's a poem called If. It used to be my favorite poem in, in school. And when I checked it recently on the internet, I found it's the second most famous popular poem in all of English literature's history. So it starts off like this. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. It goes on, then it says, if you can fill each minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And what's more, you'll be a man, my son. So Sri Krishna is saying exactly that the success and failure Arjun treat them both as imposters. After all, what is the definition of success? We become wealthy, is that success? So Howard Hughes was the most successful person in the world of his time. But he could not control his own mind. He was a gross failure as a human being. So success what is your parameter for deciding success? When he says treat your, these two imposters the same, he is telling Arjun to determine success by an inner parameter. How detached have you become? That is your success. How strong have you become in your ability to take happiness and distress in your stride? That is your real success. Shankaracharya says, what is real success? He said, Jagat Jitam Kena, who shall be the most successful in the world? Manohi Yena, 
that person who has succeeded in conquering his or her own mind so that inner success is our goal not the outer success that's not what life is all about we lay so much of emphasis to external success we forget are we succeeding internally or not somebody was telling me swami ji my daughter is always thinking about how to be famous that's external success and you become totally famous and you find you're bankrupt from inside nothing there and their life was a failure and there is somebody else nobody knows him but he's totally successful from within so ultimately the external successes will all remain here we will leave them all and go away you may have become the richest person the most famous person the most powerful person the most beautiful or handsome person the most skillful you will all leave it all here the only thing that will accompany us is our inner wealth that we have accumulated the inner success so when shri krishna is telling him that arjun become indifferent to this success he wants arjun to accumulate the inner wealth that inner wealth often requires feeling in the world often requires difficulties and tribulations just like gold the goldsmith wants it to sparkle he places it on the fire that fire is not a bad thing for the gold the fire burns away the impurities and makes it sparkle similarly we have impurities in the heart anger lust greed hatred envy illusion the difficulties that come in life are the fire we have been put in the fire of this world so that we start sparkling like gold so we have to have that willingness to accept that defeat will also come miseries tribulations are a part of life don't complain oh god let there be no pain and misery in my life oh god whatever is necessary to purify me let it happen shri arbindo prays god please don't spare me be severe upon me so that i get purified quickly and become like a great jewel in your treasure chest so this success and failure is a matter of perspective shri krishna says arjun be detached from both of these you focus upon your effort are you doing well are you putting in your best efforts that's important when i would come back as a child from games my father would say did you have a good game did you play well i would say you don't ask whether i won or lost you would say that's not important whether you won or lost is not important did you play well so shri krishna is saying arjun you focus on your efforts leave the results to god accept them both both these imposters as just the same be sure to check out our other videos with individual verse commentaries by swami mukundananda